All right, what's up, y'all? This is uh, Nightmare Baller One. I don't know where y'all gonna see this. Y'all might see this on my main. Y'all, y'all might see this on my main channel. Y'all might see this on my other channel. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, um, because I, 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 I hadn't been able to get into my main account, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, and I don't really want to put this on my comic book account because I feel like I shouldn't have to. Like, all, all, all these people, you know, in the wrestling community are doing other things now anyway. Because the YWC is trash now. You know what I mean? But if y'all want my opinions on wrestling, here it goes. It sucks. There you go. Um, but <laughs> uh, this is my review of Trine Uprising Season 1. If y'all don't know, uh, I'm a nerd, man. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big nerd, dog. Like, uh, if, if you couldn't gather that, you know, then you're just slow. Like, go to my Twitter page. Twitter.com forward slash Nightmare Baller One, and you'll see how nerdy I am. Like, you know, um, growing up, one of my favorite movies was Tron. You know I mean, when I was a kid, I think I've seen Tron like 50 times. Yeah, you know I mean, I know it like word for word, <coughs> especially the end, the big fight with uh, with Sark and, and uh, Master Control Program. I think I know that part word for word. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I was so excited about Tron Legacy. And was heavily let down. Like when I went to the movies, I was like, "Ah, that was fun," but I thought it'd be more than that. And then after owning the movie and seeing it more than once, I was like, "Dude, this is just this is, a, this is it was a better experience in the theater." So I was like, you know, well, you know, that's the end of that. You know I mean, you know, they they tried a sequel. It didn't make as much money as they thought it would. You know, and I was like, "Ah, you know, it is what it is." And then I found out about this show. Uh, Trine Uprising. It's supposed to. It was supposed to take place in between the first one, and the uh, and the um, and the second movie. And I was like, all right, you know, I I I, I love I love Trine the, the original growing up. So I was like, you know what, I, I, I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, and I'm I'm gonna say before I really get into the review of the plot and things like that, I love this show. This is like seriously one of my favorite shows. Period. And the reason I thought I should do this review is because we do not know the future of this show. For everything, everything, for every, it looks like they're going to cancel it. And it's unfortunate because I truly believe this is one of the best shows on TV. Like, all the characters are interesting. There's so, there's so many nods to fans of the extended universe, of the, of the grid. You know what I mean? Of people that, you know, are like me, that, you know, grew up on Tron, or even like grew up in that, and, you know, even, like, you know, went to go see the first one in theaters and shit like that, you know. But, uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna get right into the plot. The, the, the premise of the show is that, uh, Tron, like, Tron has been gone for, uh, for years and years. Um, after the ISO Wars that have been, uh, alluded to in the second movie. But after the ISO Wars, Tron had been gone for years. And, um, a lot, you know, he, he, he was, you know, Pretty much Clue, which is uh, the villain from the the second movie. Even though I'll I'll get to that, but um, you know Flynn, he couldn't Flynn the creator of the grid. He couldn't spend as much time in the grid, so he made a secondary program. He made a copy of himself named Clue, and uh, Clue turned out to be you know a bad idea, you know a tyrant, things like that. And um, <clears throat> you know he pretty much was a dictator. You know what I mean people were uh, people were living in fear. You know what I mean. Uh, and, you know, it was like, it was like Adolf Hitler, <laughs> practically. So, uh, Tron, you know, he, he, he disappeared for years because, okay, I'm gonna spoil it. Um, he, <laughs> he the, well, I'll get to that when I explain the plot. And he was looking for a, a apprentice. And, uh, this one program named Beck, his friend was killed by, uh, by the occupation. That's what they call clue soldiers, cl soldiers and things like that. And, uh, he was killed by the occupation. So, uh, you know, Beck, you know, as a, uh, as a sign of defiance, he dressed up with the Tron emblem and he blew up, he blew the head off a statue of Clue. And, uh, as he was running away, he was, uh, he was, he was taken. He was, uh, he was, he was caught by this, uh, by this one program. And the program was asking him, like, you know, why'd you do this and stuff? And then Beck was explaining his story. He was like, you know, we've lived in fear of Clue for too long. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, this is not right. And he was like, I just decided to do a stand. He was like, you know, what it, what it, what it in the program tells him, um, the, uh, 
the the punishment for your crime is derezzing. And then he was like, you know what, fine, you know, at, at least, you know, at least I'll die knowing that, you know, I put a dent in clues, you know, in clues reign of terror, you know, the people of Argon, which is the city that Beck lives in in the grid. He was like, you know, at least the people would know you don't need to be afraid anymore. My death will mean something. And right when he said that, he was like, no, that won't be. And the program says, you know what, I won't kill you. That won't be necessary. And he puts his disc back and he reveals himself in his trine. And Tron tells him, I'm looking for an apprentice. Can you do the job? And then uh, and he tells Beck the thing about it. And then Beck decides, you know, hey, yeah. Yeah, you know. So the main, the main, the main plot of the show is Tron training Beck to be his successor. And there's a lot of different things. And, and Beck has, uh, let me explain the characters real quick. I'm not scripted. <laughs> you know, it's been a while. So y'all y'all probably hadn't seen me. But uh, I'm not scripted. So get ready for that. Uh, let's see. Some of the main characters of the show... You got Beck, you got Zed, who is one of uh, Beck's best friends. Um, he and he and Beck and 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 Zed uh, likes Beck's other best friend, who's named Mara. Now the funny thing about Zed and Mara is that Zed does not like the Renegade because he feels like, and that's what they call you know Beck because you know he dresses like Tron, but people don't believe he's Tron because Tron had been considered dead. You know what I mean? So they just, you know, they refer to him as a renegade, you know. And uh, Zed does not like the renegade because the renegade seems to make things harder for him. Like, he he made this new bike for himself. And uh, as Beck was on the run as the renegade, he had to steal Zed's bike. And, you know, it, just felt, it, it was just terrible. <laughs> and then, you know, Zed was like, he's always in the way and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Mara's like, you know, he's doing the right thing because, you know, you know Clues, Clues reign of terror, you know, it's it's just not... She was like, all, all programs should live free. And, you know, it's just not it's not fair for people to be, you know, living like this, you know. And Zed believes, you know, everything was fine before he came along. Why does everything have to change? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Abel, who, uh, who, who's, uh, who's Beck's boss, Beck, Zed, and Mara's boss, all three of them are mechanics. And Abel runs his, uh, runs the uh, garage shop they, uh, they work at. Now, Abel, when the series first starts, it doesn't seem like he's that big of a character. It doesn't seem like, you know, he's he's that important. It just seems like he's kind of like a mentor type figure, you know, for Zed and Mar and Beck. But uh, Abel has a lot of things that you don't know about him <laughs> until later on in the series. And uh, you find out, and it's pretty interesting stuff. Like, you kind of, like, it's kind of hinted at a little bit. But, uh, you know, you, you, you once you see, you're like, oh, that's cool. And then, you know... Some things happen with Abel that are really cool that I don't want to ruin in this. Well, there there are gonna be some spoilers, but not many. Um, you know, so be warned for that. If you want to watch the show and not be spoiled at all, then don't don't listen to this video. Um, <clears throat> you know, but there's some cool things with Abel. Abel's like one of my favorite characters in the show. You know, you can tell he's wise beyond his years, and some things happen that I won't ruin. Then you got Tron, who you know. If you've seen Tron, you know it's the, you know Tron is like Tron is the Batman of the grid, man. You know he he he's the man, and he does some awesome shit in this show. And you know and, and uh, you know yeah you know I don't I don't want I don't have to go too far about Tron. You know Tron is just awesome in this show. Just he he's he's so awesome. But um, one thing I wanted to talk about though, before I move on with the characters, the voice acting in this show. Is uh in in incredible like in, in just amazing like I, I feel like the weakest voice actor I mean in terms of just acting like voice wise is Elijah Wood as Beck and notice I said Elijah Wood so think about it. <laughs> I mean he's a good he, he's Elijah Wood he's a great actor you know and as Beck you know he uh you know he he's good you know he's really good but of all the characters in the show he's probably the weakest if you think about it you got um I'm not looking off anything you know. I, I forget who plays. I, I know Mara's Mandy Moore. If you if you know Mandy Moore, uh, she does a great job as Mara. I forget who plays Zed. Um, you know, uh, uh, Abel is uh, Abel is Carl Winslow from <laughs> from Family Matters. You know, so uh, yeah, you know, ima imagine imagine Steve go home except awesome. <laughs> so yeah, you know, uh, um, and then you know the villains. You got uh, Lance Hingridson as a uh, as a general Tesla, uh, like like um, one of um, Clue's lieutenants, I would call him the main antagonist of the show because Clue doesn't appear much in the actual series, and uh, 
Tesla is awesome, man. Tesla is uh, he he's kind of like the guy you can tell he has higher aspirations, but uh, he can't go as far as he as he wants to because he answers the clue, you know. So, oh, he he's awesome though. Like uh, he's a genius, you know. What I mean, some of the position he puts he puts the renegade in, it's kind of dope, you know. What I mean, you can tell that he has a lot of pride. Uh, he's a villain with um. He's just evil too, especially the way he uh recruited uh my second favorite character in the show. Uh Paige. The way he recruited her, how he tricked her. Uh and uh, Paige is a really cool character because she she believes in the occupation because you know, Clue hated ISOs and she was led to believe that she was tricked by a group of ISOs. And then she was found by General Tesla. And General Tesla pretty much convinced her to join him because he was like, you know, these ISOs tricked you. And I, I won't go too far into what happened, but you just got to see it. Um, I like her because she has a sense of right and wrong. She's always doing the right thing. She doesn't want innocent programs to die regardless of what uh, what um, Tesla wants and things like that. But she has a loyalty to him because she, felt like, she feels like that he, you know, he, he saved her life more than one time. Then you got Pavel, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think even more so than Tron and Beck, he's my favorite character. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, how you? I forget how to say that chick name. The chick from Entourage, she she plays Paige. I forget it. Emmanuel Chikoria, how have you say that name? Uh, Tree or something. She uh, she's um, she's Paige. And she does a great job. Uh, but my favorite character has got to be Pavel. Pavel, if you could believe it, <laughs> is voiced by Pee Wee Herman, of all people. Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman, yes. And uh, he is awesome. Like He does such a great job. Such a great job. He's hands down the best voice actor. In the, well, one other person, I would say. But uh, second best. he's the second best voice actor in this show. And um, the other per well, I'd say he's the best voice actor that's part of the main cast. Let's put it like that. And uh, he does such a great job. He's such a great bad guy out here. Like, his, his intentions is obviously, obviously to advance himself. And he'll do anything and trick anybody to do it. And, you know, and with Pee Wee's voice, Pee Wee Herman's voice behind him, like, like it's just it's, it's so awesome just to see him do dastardly things. He, he's a great character. Um, but uh, and some, of the, some of the other characters that appear on the show but aren't, like, really main characters. You got, um, I'm not looking at anything. This is me going to the top of the head. You got Cyrus. Well, I'm going to go ahead and ruin his uh, little storyline. Uh, Cyrus was imprisoned by Tron uh, because he was the first renegade. He was he was Tron's first choice to be his successor. And uh, it turned out to be a mistake because Cyrus was unstable. And, you know, he was crazy. And Cyrus, if you can believe it, is voiced by Aaron Paul. If you don't know who Aaron Paul is, that's Jesse from Breaking Bad. If you don't know what Breaking Bad is, you know, crawl, crawl out from under that rock you've been living under. And, you know, turn to AMC, go on Netflix, search Breaking Bad, and enjoy yourself for four seasons. But, um, <laughs> and, and, then, and then when the fifth season is over, it'll probably be on there too. So, yeah. Or, um, or just, just catch up. Just, just get hip to reality. So, if you don't know what Breaking Bad is, I can't help you. But, um, he, he's probably the best voice actor on the show. He does an amazing job as Cyrus. It's like my favorite episode of the entire series is uh one with Cyrus where um Cyrus meets I don't want to ruin everything but Cyrus meets uh Zed and Mara and uh you know he 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 th like he it's almost like he threatens to tell them that Beck is the renegade because Beck keeps it a secret from uh damn near everybody and um like you know he threatens to tell them and then like at the end of the episode he kidnaps Zed and Mara and um. And he kidnaps Tron, and he makes he makes Zed, he makes uh Beck choose, you know, who you gonna save, Zed and Mara, or Tron, you know, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, it's like it's my favorite episode of the show. The way the way it's all resolved is something I did not expect, and it, like it kind of rocked my world. Um, and I and I am gonna ruin the season finale because I got a little rant <laughs> after after I explain what happened. Um, you know, uh, yeah, but Cyrus, you got a. Uh, you got Clue, who appears twice. You know, he only has like three, well, three times actually. Um, he only, you know, he only says about four lines the entire series. All of them are impactful. <laughs> um, oh, he says about seven lines the entire series. All of them are impactful. Um, he, you know, you can tell things where things will go with him. 
Um, you, you just tell, especially at the finale. You got you got a uh, you got Dyson, who um, was one of Tron's friends, betrayed Tron, joined the occupation, uh, and is also Clue's uh, first in command. You know, so I'm pretty sure there's a big storyline uh, with with Dyson if they if they do make a season two, because uh, every time he appears in this show is pretty important, especially the two parter, which is uh, pretty damn awesome. Um, uh, I can't think of anybody. I think those are all the main character, the main characters I should talk about. Um, let me talk about the look of the show for a second. Um, it, it's uh, yes, I say um a lot. I say um er all, all that stuff. Yeah, whatever. Um, 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 um. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you got the grid is like a 2D, 3D type structure. You know, it's. I can't explain really the look of the show because it's unlike anything I've seen. Like it's 3D. But there's influences influences of 2D in it, and you know if if you like Tron, if you especially if you like Tron Legacy, if you like the look of Tron Legacy, you'll love the look of this show. All the light cycles look great. Um, you know, every everything looks everything looks exactly how you would expect a Tron animated series to look. You know, Argon is beautiful. Like some of like the the wide shots of the show in HD uh, 720p, which is what I watch in. Can't afford 1080p. But in 720, <laughs> 720p, it looks incredible, you know. Well, at least I, I probably could, but I just don't have a 1080p tele- television. But um, it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Like some some of the wide shots look just just nuts. Uh, you know, as I said, the characters are all interesting. The storylines are really deep. A lot of them don't end the way you would expect. Uh, the fight scenes in this show are choreographed amazingly. Like they, I'm gonna ruin this. That is one fight scene where Tron goes after Dyson because Dyson betrayed him, as you know, uh, you know, unbeknownst to Beck, because Beck didn't want him to do it. And the fight scene between Tron and Dyson is so awesome. Like Dyson has like this, like if you don't know, and uh, and Tron, and Tron, the the main means of fighting is is are the memory discs that people wear on their back that pretty much has, you know, all the data in themselves, but it also can be used as a weapon. And Tron and Dyson are fighting each other. And it's just nuts because, like, you know, he's whipping, like, he's whipping the disc around, like, on his chain, and, you know, <laughs> back and forth and shit like that. And then Tron slides, like, you know, the fight is just awesome up to that point, but the way it ends is, like, Tron slides under the disc and sticks his arm through the hole in the disc and cuts the, and cuts the chain off of the disc. And it's just, it's just so awesome. Because, like, they show it all in slow motion. And, like, some of the light cycle, some of the light cycle parts in this shit are just amazing. And... And the weapons all look amazing. You know, the characters all, you know, it's it's just like, the show is very stylish. You know, once you get used to the character models, which I will admit are a little jarring because everyone's kind of like tall and almost stiff looking. But, you know, it, it's still, once you get used to it, though, it, it looks amazing. Like some of the, you, you see why it's that way. You know, there's a reason why it looks like that. Um, you know, but I want to talk about the finale. That's the main reason I made this video. That's pretty much a synopsis of the series. The series as a whole. It's absolutely incredible. I, I I I recommend this to the highest level. Y'all know I love Transformers Prime. Uh, well, actually, I don't know this because this is probably gonna be on my main channel. Sorry to all y'all motherfuckers that want to make a wrestling video, but this will probably be on my main channel. Um, you know, I love uh, I I love this show, man. Um, I recommend it to the highest level. But I want to talk about the season finale. The season finale of this show. Beck finds out. Well, he already knew. But um, Tron's condition has gotten worse because he got in a fight with Cyrus, who I just mentioned, and the damage did and the damage to him was more than he initially thought. So the whole entire series, he's been getting in this energy chamber and kind of like healing himself. You know what I mean? In that energy chamber, this is gonna be it's full of spoilers. I'm probably gonna spoil the entire season finale. So sorry about that. You know, uh, Tron's like, you know, I'm dying. You know. This is what we train for. This changes nothing. You know, you 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 were my successor for this reason. You know, this sole reason. You know, you know what you got to do. Blah blah blah. It's actually pretty sad. <laughs> Even though I know he's not. You know, you know he's not gonna die because he's in Tron Legacy. But still, you know, it's it's, it's pretty sad that what he tells Beck. It's pretty sad. And uh, you know, Beck. He uh, you know, you know, Mar Mar and Zed are mad. Or well, Mara's mad. For a reason I won't ruin, and she's mad at the renegade, blah blah blah. 
Zed's telling her, who kind of had a change of heart, that you being mad at him doesn't make any sense. Because why would he do what you think he did, which I'm not going to ruin. Why would you? Why would he do that? It just doesn't make any sense. And then she was like, I know, but uh, he also didn't, you know, he also didn't, didn't come to the rescue without ruining what happened. He didn't come to the rescue either. <laughs> and then he was like, well, true, but the renegade can't be everywhere at once. And then, you know, she thought about it, you know, and then she was like, you know, you're right, Zed. And this is, uh, and she's like, you know, he can't, he can't fight all our battles. You are correct. So, uh, but back to Tron and, and, uh, Beck. This is all over the place, but y'all kind of stay with me. Try to. <laughs> uh, Beck tells, Beck tells Tron that, uh, he met, he met with, um, well, 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 this is what happened. He goes out. And um, he runs into Cutler, who was a friend of his. In the very first episode of the show, he uh, he fought with him in the games. The games are kind of like uh, gladiator games that some programs get sent to. And he fought with him. And um, you know, and then and then Beck and then you know Beck pretty much like like in the first episode it was kind of it was kind of you know Cutler found out that uh, Beck kind of knew Tron, so he was like, tell Tron to meet me at the docks. I forget how, but like in the first episode, because I think the renegade came to his rescue. Yeah, the, yeah, this is what happened. Beck changed to the Beck changed, you know, his clothes to the renegade, and he saved Cutler. And then Cutler asked about Beck, and he was like, I got Beck to safety. Don't worry, you know what I mean? It was like, you know, just tell everyone Tron lives. Blah blah blah. That's kind of like the theme of the show. And uh, so, you know, Beck. Runs into Cutler, and then Cutler tells Beck, "Tell trying to meet me at the docks because, uh, you know, it's an ambush that uh, some of the resistance is planning, and we would love to have Tron kind of, you know, run point." So obviously Beck is playing the role of Tron. So you know, he puts on his old renegade gear, and, you know, and he meets up. With, he meets up with Cutler, and he was like, "You know, Beck told me about this, you know, this thing, this ambush you had planned for uh, some of Clue's men and stuff." He was like, "You know, you're right. It is an ambush," and then. His, his his costume changes color. And if you don't know the occupation, the bad guys wear the color orange. His costume changes from blue t changes from blue to orange. So then, you know, you find out that he was turned. You know what I mean? And like, when I say turn, some programs, it, there's there's these machines that Clue, Clue uses to turn, you know, programs that aren't a part of the occupa occupation into slaves. So, obviously, Cutler got turned at some point. We don't know when. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, Beck gets ambushed. And then uh, when they corner, you know, Beck, Beck tries to run. But then they corner Beck. And uh, Cutler just tells him, he was like, hey, you know, trying. You know, we all know that you're dying. We all know that you're scarred up. You know I mean, because you know, Clue knows this because, you know, Cyrus turned on. Cy if you don't know what you don't know, not Cyrus, uh, Dyson. Dyson turned on trying. And, uh. When they were trying to turn Tron to the resist, I mean to the occupation, Dyson, um, Dyson tortured him, scarred him up, you know, pretty badly, and that's why Tron is uh, hooked to that machine. And you know, Clue was like, he was like, hey, Clue knows, you know, you you're scarred up under that. And he was like, you know, we have this machine that can heal you, but you know, you know, it's called the repurposing machine. And then Beck tells Tron, and you know, he was like, you know, just think about it and meet me, meet me. I forget where. And he was like, you know, and then we can save your life. And then Beck tells Tron about it. He was like, you know, Tron doesn't exist. He was like, yeah, but it will, you know, it, it'll turn me to the occupation. And then uh, Beck was like, you know, well, you know, but if he could save your life, you know, maybe you should take him up on the offer. And he was like, he was like, I'd rather die than join, you know, you know, than be a mindless slave for Clue. So uh, Beck tells him, he was like, but what if I, what if I intervene before, you know, it turns you into one of Clue's, you know, slaves. And then, uh. He was like, you know, what if I'm like right there before the procedure starts that uh wipes your memory? And Tron's like, you know, okay. You know, he was like, you got your mind made up, so I figure we just get us a try. So uh Tron goes to meet with Cutler and everything, cooperates, gets in the machine and all that. Beck is on the timetable. He has to save Tron before Tron gets turned back to the occupation. I mean, well, to the occupation. And... What what follows is like this action sequence that's unlike anything I've ever seen before in my life. Oh my god, that shit is awesome. <laughs> and the music choice is perfect, and I'll get to the music in this entire show in a second. Um, it, it's just like, it's, it's, it's greatly directed, great greatly choreographed. Everything about it is just damn near perfect. And then, right before, you know, 
Like like they they do what they say. They heal they heal Tron's body, and then as the re and and then as like the information is coming to him, like you know, like you know, as he was just about as just at just right before he was about to get brainwashed, um, Beck throws a guard into the glass that they had Tron in, and the glass shatters. So you know, and then Beck gets you know surrounded, and they pin him to the ground, and then uh Tron, you know, and then at, just as they were about to you know derez Beck, Beck Tron gets up, and he's like you know. You know, he was like, get out of the way. I'll finish him myself. And he whispers to Beck. He smiles and he whispers, I'm fine, Beck. It's me. And then they both fight the guards. And then, you know, shit happens. They all get away. And then, uh, meanwhile, back at the garage, um, you find out that, uh, that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pavel, my favorite character, uh, he, he, he took over Abel's garage for a reason I will not spoil. And then he was like, he was like, um, you know, yeah, this 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 garage belongs to the occupation now, blah 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 blah. And you know, then as as they were over there, you know, as the occupation soldiers were there and shit like that, you know, it was like, you know, this sucks, you know, this is just not cool, blah blah blah. But meanwhile, um, as Tron and and Beck are trying to escape this mothership, the mothership ends up over the garage, and the mothership collapses because they end up, you know. They beat up all the guards there. The mothership collapses, and you know, Tron ends up under the wreckage, like as, as, as like they're there or whatever. And then uh, Beck tells Tron, he was like, uh, Tron, Tron tells him, "Go, you know, leave without me." You know, you know, the, the the fight has to keep going. He was like, "Well, the occupation wants Tron. Just give me the disc so I can, you know, you know, take my usual, my usual identity as the renegade." And I'll give you enough time. I can lead them away from you. And I'll give you enough time to get out of here. So he does it. But then, uh, you know, as Beck's fighting the guards or whatever, all the people in the garage are watching. And, uh, you know, Beck beats all the guys. And, uh, you know, and then, and then Pavel and the rest of his boys, they was like, you know, why are y'all just watching? You know, you know, go ahead. You know, de them. And then, you know, Mara, Mara jumps in the way. And then she was like, no, if you want him, you go through me. And she stands and she takes off her disc and she lights it up. She's ready to fight. And then Zed was like, and me. And he pulls out his disc and he lights it. And then everybody in the garage, they all stand in front of Pavel and his boys. And the symbolism of this is because this is what Tron wanted. Tron, the reason why he wanted Beck was to, was to gather people together that aren't afraid of Clue anymore. That want to fight back. And Beck and you know I mean, an entire garage believe in Tron. And like if like if you watch if you watch this whole show, that scene will resonate with you. I'm telling you, like that scene, that like I, I literally got goosebumps watching that because it's so like everything in the show had been written up to that point. Like that was that was like that was that was the idea. You know what I mean? It, it's so well written. You know what I mean? And everything was leading to that moment, and it was just it was so well done. That people just band together and they realize that we ain't got to be scared of these motherfuckers no more. You know, we can we can actually this is our city. You know what I mean? And we can live as free as we want to. It's actually it's actually a great message behind that. But then uh okay and then 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 the occupation they realize like okay we can't we can't beat all these motherfuckers by ourselves. This ain't over renegade. They leave and then uh Tron disappears and and same thing with back and uh they go back to the base and then they find out it was like uh well. Obviously, you know, to know that uh, you were you were scarred up or whatever under this, you know, and uh, to to know, especially to know, you know, to come to Argon to find you and stuff like that, uh, you know, obviously there's more to come. And then they were going through some of the files in the ship, and uh, it was this one video file they put into this computer, and they saw Clue's face. And then at the end of the show, because Clue's the big baddie. You know what I mean, at the end of the show, you see Clue and his forces, along with Dyson, coming to Argon and in the fucking credits roll. If this show gets canceled, <laughs> like, think about it this way, okay? Imagine if something like Dragon Ball Z ended when Goku met Frieza. When, when, I, like, I hate Dragon Ball Z. I think Dragon Ball Z is the most overrated show of all time. Any show, period. Um, and, and... Take something like, but I, but I will admit, the lead up to Goku and Frieza was great. I feel like, I feel like, honestly, I feel like the series was actually great until Goku and Frieza started fighting each other. Like right when that happened, everything went to hell in my opinion. Like the show just got ridiculous. But, um, but imagine that though. Imagine like right when they meet each other, Dragon Ball Z just ending. 
None of that, none of that bullshit that came afterwards. Imagine if none of that even happened. That is the equivalent of what we're getting here. Clue is the big baddie of the Tron universe. Like, you know, the second movie is devoted to Clue. I mean, because, like, you know, he, he's he's the copy of Flynn, the creator of the grid. It's like almost, because they, cause they look at Flynn almost like God, because they, like, they even have, like, lines in the show, like, you know, as Flynn is my witness, and, you know, I don't care if he's Flynn himself, you know, because they, 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 they all, cause he created the grid. So Clue is kind of like the devil, you know what I mean? <laughs> because, because he's the evil version of the man that created everything, you know what I mean? And, 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 and Beck and Tron were finally going to fight him head on. And then the show, and then that, that's the season finale, which is what you should end on. If you're going to do that, if, if season two, the main antagonist is going to be Clue, that's what it should end on. But if they don't get another season, that's bullshit. Like, at least allow them to finish this story. Like, I, I, like these days, I'm going to talk quickly about this. I won't go that, that in-depth into it. But uh, Young Justice and Green Lantern, uh, the animated series, both look like they're about to be canceled. And, um... If they finish the story, like, a lot of people expected me to go nuclear and all that stuff. Nah, 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 I'll explain. Um, because that's kind of how the game go these days, you know. Most, most, most of these animated series, they get about a season, possibly two, sometimes even three. Like, Transformers Prime Season 3 is supposed to come out in March. So, you know, that's how I go, you know what I mean? I, that's why I'm not, I'm not that upset, you know what I mean? I, you know, I love both shows, obviously. Green Lantern, I love to death. And Young Justice, I think, you know, y'all know how much, I, well, y'all don't know, but I love Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. I feel like Young Justice was almost on par with that, you know. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just, like, it's it's like, you know, and, you know, <laughs> I get, like, you know, and, and I, I'm all right with that, you know, because if they finished the story, like, Young Justice is pretty amazing right now. But if they finish this story, I'm fine with them ending on this note. Because kind of, think about it this way, though. If they keep the show going too long, they're not young anymore. So it's not really young justice. You know what I mean? So, so I'm kind of cool with that. Green Lantern, if they finish this season and they finish the story, like, you know what I mean? If there's no cliffhangers, no nothing. If the story just finishes, I'm not that upset. Because I got one season of, you know, one of my favorite heroes of all time, Hal Jordan, with his own TV show. So I'm fine. So, you know, I'm not that upset. But they didn't finish the season. I mean, they didn't finish the story of this show. Like, there's a lot more story to tell because Beck is not in Tron Legacy, you know. And, you know, I, I think that uh, even though Clue is called, you know, even though I'm pretty, I'm, I'm reasonably sure Clue 2 from Tron Legacy and Clue are one and the same, you know, we don't know that. Maybe Beck kills Clue and then another one gets made right before Clue dies or, you know, who knows, man? Who knows, dog? Who knows? And we just, like, the story's not finished. And I finished the story. That's just how I feel. You know, what happens to Beck? Why is he not in Tron Legacy? You know, you know, how did, you know, I, well, I won't ruin that. Because, you know, I'm not going to give up Tron Legacy you know, <laughs> spoilers either. But um, something happens to Tron before Tron Legacy, you know, before before that, before, well, in the in Tron Legacy, Tron is vastly different from what he is in this series. How did that happen? You know, I would like to find these things out. And this is the show where we, you know, we can find these things out. And just allow them to finish the story. That's all I got to say. But as I said, this show is incredible. Like, you know, and that's not me exaggerating. I firmly believe this is, like, legit one of the one of the best shows on TV, period. Like, last year, it was it was so amazing. Such such adult storylines, like you know, I watch a, I watch a lot of I watch a lot of TV. You know what I mean? I watch a lot of different shows. Homeland, I think, is the best show on TV. You know, um, as I say, you know, Breaking Bad, The Walking Dead, um, you know, even American Horror Story, Asylum, which turned out to be garbage. Uh, what what did, I like the I like the last two episodes, but the show was so up and down, hit and miss. Like I, I would rec I was just telling a friend of mine the other day, I would recommend American Horror Story Murder House to everyone. Uh, Asylum to hardly no one. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, Asylum. Uh, you know, I watch Justified. I watch uh, that new show, The Following, with Kevin Bacon and uh, uh, James Purefoy. That's a good show. Um, yeah, I watch a lot of comedies. You know, I watch uh, shit like Archer. Um, Archer is amazing. Um, I even watch American Dad. <laughs> I ain't the biggest Family Guy fan no more because I just think they just go off on tangents with bullshit. Um, yeah, I watch Raising Hope. Uh, a little bit of Modern Family. You know, I watch a lot of TV. 
And I would say that Tron Uprising deserves to be in, in the same class with all those shows. Because it's that it's that good. It's you know, it's 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 well it's well written, you know, great just just great you know, it's it's a beautiful show. Everything about it is there's way more good than there is bad. But before I get out of here, I just wanna say that the music of this show might be the best thing about it. Like like the music choice they have for like different scenes is so perfect. Like some of the action scenes seem so much more tense because of the uh because of the music. The score is just incredible in this show. Like there's so much good so much so much more I can say about the show, but I don't want to because I don't want to spoil it. Y'all please, 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 please. I'm not sure if it's gonna be on Netflix soon. It came on Disney XD. They choose they pick and choose which shows from Disney XD they want on, on Netflix. But uh if it's not I know y'all motherfuckers know how to use torrents. Yo, know, buy the Blu-ray when it comes out. This, uh, just trust me. One of the best shows on TV. Period. I love this show. You know, I love this show. This, and I hope it gets a second season. Try and lives. <laughs>